I recently discovered something disturbing while reviewing my favorite men's rights subreddit. There's a witch hunt against men in Silicon Valley. Some men are even saying that the feminists have formed a cabal whose goal was to subjugate men. Yet it's the men who are being fired for their so-called sexist behavior. Silicon Valley has been battling allegations of mistreatment and sexual harassment of women in the workplace. The memo, which was published in a few different publications, has sparked outrage here in Silicon Valley that the lack of women working in tech is attributable to biological differences. Within days, Demore was fired. Some people are asking if men are the real victims in the tech industry, and I say, Yes. I decided to make it my mission to give the oppressed men of Silicon Valley a voice. So I reached out to a ton of men, but they all said no, probably because they were too scared to come forward with their stories. That's when I finally found someone brave enough. Keith Mann. Keith had created a successful e-commerce site called Witchsy, so I went to go meet him in his home office in Los Angeles to hear the full story. Hi. Hi, Hi. I'm Penelope. I'm Tim. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Kate. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, I am here to see your boss, Keith Mann. He's not real. <laughs> okay, can I come inside? Yeah, come yeah. inside. All right, great. Uh, Keith? These jokesters who are pretending Keith isn't real are Penelope Gazen and Kate Dwyer, the founders of Witchsy, an e-commerce site that specializes in weird art that I don't get and, frankly, find pretty disgusting. So explain to me how you think Keith Mann saved your business. Because well, we, we created him. Yeah, he's not real. I pretended to be Keith on emails. I Hi. made the email KeithManWitchC at Gmail. Because he was too busy to create the email himself. Again, he's not a real person, so. You gotta be frickin' shitting me, ladies. Why would anybody make up a fake man? We fabricated him because we needed a buffer when emailing with coders and developers. Every time we would communicate or email with a specific developer, he would never address us by name, but Kate noticed that whenever she would use Keith's email to contact him, he would always start every email with Keith. There were just quicker responses, more yeses, less excuses every time that we used the Keith email. We developed the character of Keith, like he, you know, has a wife. He created a Twitter yeah. account for him. Jokes about Mondays. <laughs> They're the hardest day of the week. <laughs> oh my God, Mondays. Suck. <laughs> Keith actually was a tool for us. We felt we had to prove ourselves before we were given respect, whereas with Keith, he was just automatically given it. Is this something that you would ever do again? Yeah, I would. God! <laughs> now I was pissed. By giving a job to a fake man, Penelope and Kate were taking a job away from a real man. That was sexism at its most despicable. After all, executives in Silicon Valley are only 89% men. That's not even in the 90s. So it was time to meet with some real men from tech and have a bro fest to get to the bottom of this. But once again, no men would meet with me. So I had to meet with a bunch of women instead. Yikes. These man haters are all Silicon Valley pros who've worked for companies like GoPro, Apple, and Reddit. I just feel like right now there is a witch hunt out there for men led by feminist bullies and it's super uncomfortable. It's not a witch hunt. So we conducted a study with over 200 women uh, learning more about their experiences with sexual harassment. They were saying that I don't want to pursue a legal route. I don't want settlements. I don't need money. All I want is for my company to resolve this issue and for it to not happen again. We need a culture where we respect everyone. Please stop ganging up on me. We were trying to tell you how we feel and how things can improve. Well, it's not comfortable for me. She didn't give a rotten dump about men's feelings. These women were too focused on their own problems, like the fact that only 5% of startups are run by women. But what about men? What about men? Do men have a safe space to network without women? I mean, this seems like a huge issue now. Anywhere and everywhere you go is a safe space for you. I don't feel safe right now. Ooh, that actually gives me a really great idea. <laughs> I wanted to pitch my great idea directly to a man, but surprise, surprise, the men were too afraid to meet with me. So I found Ari Hori. She's the CEO and founder of Women's Startup Lab, as featured in Forbes. And I'm a confident man who has a great feeling about this. You're probably familiar with the website LinkedIn. But I'm going to change the game. Linked men. Men do not have a safe space in tech. Linked Men aims to make tech a safe space for men once again. 
Linked men. Linked men. Linked men. It's a stupid idea. <laughs> this is not a charitable organization. We believe in investing in a company that has a viable idea. Unbelievable. I guess it was time to go to one of the few places left that are still safe for men. A sports bar, or a strip club, or Congress, or the White House, or any board, or the world of online video games, or Hollywood, or that sports-themed haircutting place I've been dying to try out, or the South in general, or the North, also the Midwest, or airplane cockpit, or Limp Biscuit concert. The world is closing in on us, fellas. Take refuge where you can.